Well, today on Nation Window Cleaning Podcast, we're going to be talking all about how to get customers some interesting things. And today's edition is all about residential. So if you're looking for customers, residential especially, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy the show. Hopefully, you want to just like nerd out and listen to all of them. And there's five years of content, so go back and watch the hundreds of episodes. Watch or listen. It's a podcast available anywhere podcasts are, and it's also on YouTube. So if you are a YouTube person, put it on. Play it in the background. But if you are one of the cool kids, and I'm yelling to you guys, that means you've watched the episodes, you're listening right now probably, you've given the videos a thumbs up on YouTube, but more importantly than anything else is that you buy your supplies through me and only me. (laughs) I do a shameless plug every week. That's my shameless plug and it was uh, intense. It was intense. It was intense. But no, I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com, and I want to be your rep. That's what I do. So call me, text me, uh, put everything in your cart, text me, be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in your cart. My number is 862-312-2026, and this week I want to do something fun. If you're ordering through me, if you've listened to this show and you're ordering through me, send me that text and say, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart, my cart's good, put it through, whatever you want. But at the end, just type dash resi. So that I know you've watched this episode. I don't know. Super fun. Anyway, 862-312-2026. The number's on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening, I've repeated my my number enough times. But 862-312-2026. Okay. Another thing that you can definitely do that would uh, help me help the industry and make you even awesomer than you are is subscribing to the American Window Cleaner magazine If you're watching YouTube right now, I'm showing pictures of the magazine because I have a ton of them here. If you uh, haven't seen the stickers behind me, all those stickers come from the magazine. The magazine comes with a sticker sheet every single time. So get a subscription. Go to awcmag.com. Get it. It is like the biggest, awesomest high five. I have so many of you who put every order in through me regardless, which is absolutely amazing, by the way. I see names come across sometimes, and I'm like, no, oh, they used to use me. But And then you also have the magazine, and uh, you make my world happy. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Virtual high five to all of you. Anyway, longest intro ever, I apologize. But uh, today on Nation, we are talking all about getting customers. And I'm going to do basically a three series, three part series, I guess, all about getting customers. We're going to talk about each one. So there's residential, commercial, and of course, route. And now all three of those are absolutely different in how you go. 100% different, each one. What works for residential will not work for commercial, telling you. But today we're starting off with residential because most of you are uh, window cleaners that do residential at least in some part, right? There are guys that are out there doing route, um, but uh, those guys keep their their nose to the grindstone, and uh, a lot of times they're not watching. But if you're a route-only guy, uh, jump on and say what's up. Um, But most people are doing route. um, They're also doing residential, right? So residential is a big one, but you're now talking to somebody at their residence. You're talking to somebody at their castle or in their house or you have to go to them there's a lot of things that kind of differentiate you if you're at the work place of work anybody can come in there legally so you can basically do anything or say anything on that side of it and people aren't going to be really taking offense and they're not going to be as leery as when they let you into their house that's the hard part is getting somebody in and getting trusted now there's a lot of you out there who are very uh, personable and uh, no one would ever say no to coming in their house ever but there are some of you who may have a little bit more trouble and there's a different ways to kind of communicate with people but once you get in front of them it's your time to shine work on communication work on sales work on uh physical um 
presentation, how you stand, where you stand, how your posture is, all that stuff works. So if your close rate's not awesome, you want to improve that, I'm telling you, just look up some books, maybe ebooks, things like that on selling, and you'd be surprised at how many people could just use a little bit of help in the selling department. But anyway, but what we're talking about is how to find people, the actual um, advertising side of it. And I'm going to kind of go through simple, cheap, easy, all the way up to now I got lots of customers, but I need to keep the beast fed. And you guys know what I'm talking about, right? But the first one's flyers. Flyers in general, in the public's eye, they think that they're cheaper, which means that your product might be a little bit cheaper, which means that they may be more willing to give you uh, a call because they think that you're going to be one of the less expensive window cleaners. But because they don't know what your value is you're bringing, flyers are one of those things. Now, flyers can be door hangers. They can be full car color copies. They can be black and white flyers on canary yellow paper. But I'm going to tell you a little secret right now. If you go to a place, FedEx, Kinko's, local printer, whatever, and you just type up a black and white Microsoft Word, but you put it on yellow paper, that's going to cost you more per piece than it will to get super ultra full color stuff printed. I'm telling you, search it. We have at cost printing. The stuff for flyers is so ridiculously cheap. Per piece is next to nothing. So do yourself a favor. You can also use templates, by the way. Uh, but uh, you can call us, contact us uh, at cost print. Go to a website, windowcleaner.com, you can see it. But get a template, get a nice piece made so that you have flyers made that you can hand out anytime you have time. And they're professional. And they make an impact. They're split tested. People know what works. There's some really good options. But flyers are one of those things that if you have more time than money, you go hand out flyers. I'm telling you, if you're newer in your business, if you're not, um, you know, 40, 50 hours a week, every single week, hear me out here. The grind you do in the beginning pays for itself towards the end. The first year or two of business, or if even if you're slow right now, your hustle is what's going to either accelerate your business or keep the trajectory going slow. Work on your business eight hours a day, even if you don't have eight hours of work. I'm telling you, that is a theory that's a, a life lesson right there. If you're not taking anything else away from that, your hustle is what changes that, right? And flyers are one of those things. You have time, take a flyer and hand it out. Now, there's a few things. And I had somebody just, uh, I wish I remembered the text. I get a lot of text, I apologize, but it's just a couple days ago about asking about mailboxes. Now, technically, you can talk to um, your postmaster and find out, but uh, the ex outside of a mailbox is not federal property at all. The outside of the box is not. The inside, the inside is. So there are people who will... Um, take that and then they will uh, put a flyer on the outside of a mailbox or on the flag, something like that, uh, just like a door hanger. There's people who do clip flyers, which I'm not a huge fan of, like putting gravel in a baggie and then throwing that on somebody's, it just feels garbagey to me. Some of you do it, some of you love it and uh, get a lot of money, but flyers, you can do it a ton of different ways. You can even walk door to door and hang a door hanger on the front door. It's just getting them into their hands. Now, a big thing to do also, if you're going to be doing the outside of the mailbox, which is what I do, if you have a simple rubber band or a simple paper clip that helps attaching it to a mailbox, even if you fold it up, put it on, do whatever, super, super easy. If you want to prep a bunch of things and you want it to kind of like hang, do a paper clip with a rubber band. Now, the rubber band can go on things. The paper clip holds the flyer. It's straight. It's super noticeable. But when you're doing flyers, especially on mailboxes and blanketing neighborhoods, if it is windy, do not do it. Because what happens is your flyers blow off and all of a sudden you're that guy who littered through the neighborhood. So it's a double-edged sword, right? 
But another way that you can do, you got flyers down, you're kind of looking for something to put a little bit more in is Facebook. Facebook is awesome. Facebook, the reason that Facebook is so beneficial for sales in general, is it's so targeted. Now, if you're going to improve your business, take B-roll footage. Take footage on every job of your trucks in front of a house or your hand cleaning a window. or It could be, it feels like the exact same picture I'm telling you, but it's not. And B-roll footage is what you're going to be using for your Facebook page. All you're going to be doing is explaining things but not selling on your Facebook page. Maybe once a week you'll mention something. Right? You don't want to sell on Facebook through your Facebook page. But if you got a little cheddar burning a hole in your pocket, and I'm talking about a little. I mean, you can do an ad and get it out there for next to nothing. But a Facebook ad is super, super targeted. You can get really, really good at Facebook marketing. You can hire people to do your Facebook, right? You guys know I talk about Justin Monk SEO all the time. Monk SEO has a guy named Ryan Johnson who does Facebook ads that you do through Monk SEO. So if you're doing SEO with them, you can also say, hey, I want to start doing Facebook ads and he can run your program. Having somebody who actually knows what they're doing is huge. Really, really, really big, right? So... Facebook ads can be super targeted by spending a little bit of money. A really, really big bang for your buck. But even on the Facebook side of it, you have uh, Facebook groups, right? Search moms of your city, right? Mom groups, local groups, city groups, all those things. If you start commenting, not selling, just commenting from a business page, you'll see that start to go. You can also search just people asking about window cleaning. There's always people searching in these groups and things that are asking, hey, who, who's got a good recommendation for a window cleaner? You could jump in and say, hey, I'm quite partial, but I'd love to give you a free estimate, see what we can do for you, or however you want to word that, right? Facebook is big. Facebook is a place that people are talking, and they're talking about usually some kind of service, some kind of house, some kind of issues, some kind of, right? I'm looking for a cleaning lady to start cleaning my house. I'm done with it. Oh, well, I don't do uh, uh, any maid service, but if you're ready to get those windows cleaned and get you on a rotation or a schedule, I'd love to be the person, right? Putting that out there, not salesy, salesy, but letting them know what you do is big. You guys know Doing this podcast, now, th- today was a bad example because my intro, uh, my shameless plug was big because it's coming into fall and I'm really trying to push getting some 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 sales. But uh, this is how I make my money. I make my money by putting orders in for people. That's what I do. So when I put an order in for you, I put it in. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but yet I get credit for it, right? That's how I do it. But if I could drop my name into the pool, right? If I could say, hey, I'm Jersey. I know you're already entering window cleaning orders. I know you need supplies. Let me put them in for you. It would mean the world to me. Truly, this is how I make my, right? Putting that out there, it was a little salesy. I'm not trying to be salesy. I'm just trying to let people know. But if you let people know what you do, especially on Facebook, now all of a sudden, They know what you do and they're going to come to you, right? They're going to search you. They're going to do all that stuff. And it's all because you let them know what you do, right? So doing your Facebook pages, going into groups, searching things locally, especially because you can find all that super targeted stuff. Super awesome. But say, hey, I'm starting to get less time to do all this stuff. I'm getting less time, right? I've already hired Monk SEO, they're doing stuff for me. They're doing my Facebook ads. They're doing my everything. Which, by the way, uh, we're trying to do a recording on the Christmas light ads right now because that's huge, huge, huge. It's the time of year. But I got all that, but I still need to feed the beast. I still need to get some more stuff. I'm looking for a, a way to blanket everybody, get my stuff out there. What can I do? It's EDDM. That's E-D-D-M. Every door, direct mail. Now, that is a program from the U.S. Post Office. So if you're watching from another com- country, that is not going to uh, be applicable. Applicable. 
<laughs> to you, right? But in the US, we have a program called the Every Door Direct Mail. Now, I'm talking about doing a blanket by route. So I'm not gonna get too much into Every Door Direct Mail. I'll do a show on that. But Every Door Direct Mail, Every Door Direct Mail, EDDM is a blanket. You get a carrier route, 350 people on this one route. That means that they, you give them the material and they just give every single mailbox, they do anything that, that piece of mail. It's blanketing, but it is ridiculously inexpensive for delivery. The delivery part, I mean, you're talking like 16 cents. I actually haven't checked it. Might have gone up. 16 cents a piece, something along those lines. If you know the new cost uh, comment in the video on YouTube, but at 16 cents a piece, where you're like, whoa, man, like if I send out 100 pieces, yeah, obviously, you know, if you send that out, it's $16 for 100 pieces. That's not a lot, right? You send out 1,000 pieces, it's 160 bucks. For you personally to walk door to door or have somebody walk door to door for a thousand people, it is going to be ridiculously, ridiculously expensive and time consuming. Give it to the post office. Now, there's ways you got to go search the Every Door Direct Mail through the USPS. The site is awesome. You can pick carrier routes, it shows you everything on there. But there's specific things that you, there's specific things that you, have to do right you have to count them bent, bundle i'm not going to get into go look at it but it is absolutely a great program the roi is super high but the return is not now ROI's return on investment meaning how much money am i making for how much money i'm spending if it's done right in the right time and it's lined up it could be really really good but the return on that, meaning I hand out a thousand, you may only get one, right? You may only get one person back, but think about your return. On a thousand, it's you're gonna get a lot more calls than that. But say that you only got one person, it costs you $160 to get that one person. That's a lot. But out of a thousand, again, depending on your ROI and things like that, I'm putting out a thousand and I'm getting 10. Now all of a sudden I'm getting 10 people in and for that 160 bucks, I have a minimum of, or say my average ticket's 350 bucks. That's $3,500 for 10 people. So I just brought in $3,500 for 160 bucks. Return on investment is awesome. The return, meaning only one person, only 10 people out of a thousand is not good, but again, you're blanketing it. EDDM is really good. It gets a ton of stuff out there. And it gets it out really, really fast. So look that up. If you're ready for it, do the research. There are specific ways you have to do EDDM. Another one that is absolutely controversial, absolutely controversial, is Home Advisor, Yelp, and Thumbtack. Those are those are great when they're great. Let me explain. Home Advisor is a program that you could say, "Hey, I clean windows," and Home Advisor goes, "Cool, you want to be in the in the loop on this?" Yes. So when somebody searches, they go in there, they go to Home Advisor because Home Advisor goes, "Hey, we'll match you with uh, local companies in your area, and you can you know contact ten of them all at one time, whatever it is." But the problem is, is that when someone says, "Hey, my name is Jane Doe, I want to have my windows cleaned." They type all their information and it sends it to how many people they have on the register. Everyone gets that information at the exact same time. If you're fast with the back and forth, if you can call them right away and keep them on the phone is the trick. But if as soon as I get the text saying I got a new one, I call them. Hey, I just got this coming across. Let me uh, pull up your uh, address. I'd love to give you an estimate right over the phone and ask you a few questions. Now, the whole time everybody else is trying to call them. They're getting... The voicemail, 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 because you're on the phone with them. Well, if you do your clothes right, if you bid it over the phone, and if you tell them the schedule, get everything, they may be the exact same thing and just be like, oh, it's done. This guy's good. Done, done, done. You got it. It was worth the 25, well, depending on what market you're in, goes even more for the lead. But they will charge you that regardless if you get it or you don't. You get 25 
to $35 plus dollars per lead that comes to you. They're super, super hot leads. And you can get a lot closed for that, but people tend to not like it because it can get expensive, right? If they send you two leads or 10 leads, it could be $250 worth of leads. But if I'm closing nine of those, oh, all day long, you send me a customer that I'm going to make, again, average, say $300 a ticket, you're going to send me $3,000 worth of work and I got to pay you 250 bucks. Done. Because guess what? The next time I don't have to advertise to them, they're my customer. Absolutely worth it. There's also Yelp and there's also uh, Thumbtack. Thumbtack's a little bit different where they give you general, say, hey, this customer is in this general area with 22 windows. Do you want the lead? If you say yes, you pay them for it. If you say no, they don't send it to you. So if you're busy, you don't get it, that kind of thing. But with even Home Advisor, they can take... Um, they can take a break, you can pause it, you can do all that stuff. People hate Home Advisor because it's giving them to everybody and there's fake leads like anything. Somebody's just trying to see if it works or they're another contractor and they're going to be joining uh, Home Advisor. So they decided to do it and yeah. Every now and then you can get fake leads, but for the most part, you can really get a lot of incoming stuff as you're building your company up. Now, if your company is huge, I still suggest to do it if you have, especially phone people who can call right away, 100%. But if you're new, it's big because you get the exposure without having the exposure. It really makes a lot of sense. So look at Home Advisor. Again, this is for residential. It's different everywhere, but see what works for you. I like Home Advisor used to be service magic. Yeah, I was a home advisor for like 10 years. I like, uh, yeah, 10 years. Uh, what I didn't like, by the way, personal story time is when I sold my company, I started another company in North Carolina when I moved. And uh, I called them and said, hey, I just wanted to sign up with Home Advisor again. I've had you guys for 10 years. I just, this is a new name, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, it's like $399 to start or whatever the, the, the thing was at the time. I'm like, no, no. I've already been a member. I just need to turn it on for this new company. They're like, yeah, we can't waive that fee. I'm like, I've been a member for 10 years. So that part pissed me off. But anyway, I digress. Check it out. Um, so now you got the customers. You've done some ads. You're getting some stuff in, but you're feeding that beast. You're trying to get more stuff in the residential world. There is the number one, number one thing that you can do that people overlook. Every time. If I'm wrong, tell me. But it's referrals. It is referral work. People go, yeah, get referrals. I know you do. You get as many as you do without trying. Imagine if you tried to get referrals. So here's the thing. When you're running a business, no matter what your marketing is, if you're good, 50% of your work coming in new customers will be referrals. Now, the best thing about a referral is that if Jane Smith loves Lori Smith and she trusts Lori and Lori goes, oh, these guys are great. Jane will call you and say, yep, I want you. You don't have to sell me. I don't need anything. I just, I know that you're good. And because I trust this person, I trust you. Absolutely the best form, the easiest form, the highest close rate. And you didn't even spend any money to get referrals, but... What if you upped your referral game? What if you advertised in a way to get more referrals? If that's the easiest close, people come to you, it's the cheapest one, why not ask every single person for referrals? Hey, at the end of your spiel, I'm Jersey. Uh, I just want to let you know that we are a local company and we thrive on referrals. Anybody you can send to us, Pass out her name. Here's some plastic gift cards. If you've been watching or listening to the show, you know what those are, right? Pass it around. We love referrals. That's how we exist. So anybody you hear talking about it, bring our name up. I'd be, I'd be genuinely, genuinely uh, so thankful if you did that. Asking for a referral is huge. People are like, oh yeah, oh, I'll do that for you. They will go out of their way then to help you. Because look how many you're getting and you didn't ask anybody. Now, what if you do your follow-up call a week later? Hey, just wanted to call, uh, follow up with you. Make sure everything looked amazing. See if uh, 
oh yeah, everything looked great. The windows were perfect. Oh my gosh, it was awesome. Great. Well, I just want to remind you that uh, we do love referrals. So if there's anything or anyone that you think of, I would love you just to pass our name to them. Uh, we would love to be in the area. Maybe if they're neighbors the next time we can uh, pair you together. Something like that, right? Let them know. Now you send your emails out. Bring up referrals. Maybe it's not the time for you to clean your windows, but do you know anybody else who's looking? Let us know, right? Have friends. We'll give them $25 off if you give us your name and we'll uh, tell them that... uh, you know, you saved them 25 bucks, whatever it is. Asking for referrals will increase your referrals and they're the best type of lead, right? There's another thing that I'm not on here because I think it's such an important thing that it's kind of its own thing, but is is on the side note is a referral from one person is very good, but a referral from a hundred people is really good. What do I mean by that? I mean reviews. If you're not getting reviews, get reviews, right? Nice job. I've talked about them. Go uh, get something to get those reviews up. If you get hundreds of reviews, it's social acceptance. If 200 people say, this dude is five stars. I love him. Then you're going to look at him. Even though you don't know any of those people, you're like, well, I got to be right, right? Reviews are huge. Refus- reviews are like referrals. But referral game can be up. You can actively search out referrals telling you another thing is is that now that you have somebody they love your service they love you you made them extremely happy go hey by the way we also do house washing uh concrete roof cleaning gutter cleaning screen repair we do christmas lights right put it all out there Every time to let them know everything you do and get an upsell. An upsell is when, hey, I I don't know if I'm going to trust you. You do the work. Oh, my gosh. It was amazing working with you guys. You did so good. I'm so happy right now. My windows look great. What other things can I do to make me happy like this that you offer? People think it's like bothering people, but it's not. Right? Even when you went to McDonald's, the king of the upsell back in the day. Oh, yeah, I'll take a cheeseburger and a Coke. Oh, do you want fries with that? Did I ever somebody ever get mad? Somebody ever like, I just ordered a cheeseburger and Coke. I can't believe you'd try to get more money. At-. No, you're like, well, fries would be delicious with that. Would you like some? Right? Oh, you're so happy that your windows are clean, but the siding is green. What if I clean the siding, you know, the next time we come to your windows, do it all together? Oh, that would be amazing. You're making people happy. Why fight the upsell? Upsells are huge. Once somebody likes you, trusts you, and uses you, the upsell's easy. But of course, you need to have customers before you can do an upsell, right? And my most favorite hack ever is a frequency hack. You already know what I'm going to say, more than likely, but frequency. People go... Hey, you want your windows clean? They go, yeah, cool, I clean my windows. Awesome, next time you need us, just call. And they go, okay. And now you're like, well, I sure hope they call me back. I sure hope they keep my number. I sure hope they remember who I was. I sure hope that it doesn't take them five years for them to realize they need window cleaning again. I sure hope. If you're running your company on hopes, that's the wrong way to do it. My opinion only, I'm just some idiot. But if you put it in their hands... You're not running your business. You're like hoping you have a business, right? The dentist close is taking control of your business. It's taking those jobs and saying, okay, great. So we did your job now. Look at how happy you are. Oh, endorphins are running. There's, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Perfect, perfect. So uh, yeah, I appreciate everything. Uh, So we have uh, uh, your next appointment. I wanted to know if you wanted to go every three months or if you wanted to wait uh, six months for that next appointment. Now, when you go to the dentist, you leave with another appointment. Every time, you've never been offended. You've never been like, it's coming. Break the mindset and think about it the same way. People go, oh, well, three months. Oh, three months actually puts me out to fall. Yeah, let's do three months, right? Otherwise, they go, oh, no, uh, three months is a little quick. Let's do six months. I think that'll work. 90% of your people will schedule your next appointment. You're not waiting for them. What if you took all of your customers 
from last year, and you made them each get at least two appointments a year instead of one. What about those ones that come every two years? If you can increase that, meaning you are so happy right now, I want to help you be happy again, your business will explode. I know guys who are booked out entire month of March and part of April. They're already booked out. When I'm recording this, it's September. But it's because those are the rotation people. Rotation people, now all of a sudden it's like, awesome. Well, if I'm already booked out March and half of April, and it's not even close to that time yet, I need to get another crew on. You're going to grow. Now all of a sudden it drops those dates back, right? Now these rotations, you have a whole year of people, every single month you will have customers. Every single month you're not losing those people to somebody else because somebody else had a better ad. You're not losing those people because somebody else happened to contact them and just happened to be the right time and they wanted to try something. You're not losing them. You're keeping them. Your retention is up. Frequency, once you have the people, is absolutely huge. So, do that. Anyway, today's episode has been brought to you by the letters AWC. It's an American Window Cleaner magazine. By the way, you're watching a podcast right now. You are, right? We're all nerds in this industry right now. If you want to just get another step in this, focused, increase your business, articles, pictures, join the culture, support the industry. Support me. Heck, I own the magazine. Go to awcmag.com forward slash sub get your subscription it's like 69 bucks every single month you'll get an episode or an issue it comes um in a package like this is plastic see got plastic inside here is your sticker sheet front page in the magazine so get stickers put your window cleaning stickers on everything be absolutely awesome if you need supplies which if you're watching this you own a company which means every single person the thousands and thousands and thousands of you that have watched or listened to this episode need window cleaning supplies. I want to be your rep for all of them. My number is 862-312-2026. Call me, text me, let me put your order in. It's super, super easy, and I would be genuinely grateful. So thank you for that in advance. But anyway, until next week, go out there and let's get some more customers, but more importantly, let's be epic.